Hello everyone. So this is Sophie and the Heidelberg Cat. I love this book and I love reading it to all of you. Sophie is crying. Her sister Michaela has broken her dollhouse and no one cares. To make matters worse, she has pushed over her sister and then yelled at her parents and stormed up the stairs. She looks out the window and sees on the chimney the cat from the Heidelberg's house next door. She stares at it when, to her utter amazement, it suddenly asks her, You're crying. What for? Sophie is very surprised, but she knows that you cannot tell lies to a talking cat. Michaela just broke my new dollhouse, she says, so I gave her a shove and I knocked her down flat. Then I screamed at my parents and I ran to my room, and now I feel guilty for doing all that. In fact, I feel worse about me than the dollhouse. What do you mean? asks the Heidelberg cat. We do things like that sometimes too, huh? See, here's the kitty. He came to see her. Well, Sophie whispers, I've upset Michaela, I've upset my mom, and I've upset my dad. And worst of all, I've even upset God. And the Bible says that means I'm really bad. The cat puts his paws on the windowsill, grins, and says, Sophie, let's go for a rooftop walk. Quick as a flash, Sophie climbs out the window. She knows you say yes to a cat that can talk. Scrambling up the tiles and walking down the roofs, they peer into the houses and gardens and chat. The birds in the skies raise their eyes in surprise at a girl on the roof with a talking cat. Right, says the cat, you just mentioned the Bible. So what do you think it is trying to say? Easy, says Sophie. It's trying to tell us how we can please God and be kind and obey. Do you see? See him walking on the rooftop? We don't walk on rooftops because that would be silly. We also don't have a talking cat though, so. Be bold like King David, be brave like Queen Esther, and do what God tells you no matter how scary. Don't fight him like Pharaoh or trick him like Judas. Be patient like Paul and respectful like Mary. The cat looks at Sophie. And are you? It asks. Not really, says Sophie, at least not for long. That's why I was crying before. It's so hard to be good all the time and it always goes wrong. Ah, says the cat, let me tell you a secret. There's no one who can. Not your mom, not your dad. Your friends or your neighbors, and even your teacher, when no one can see, is surprisingly bad. Look around the street. Mrs. Gubbins is rude. The Macintosh children are always in fights. The pastor gets angry. The shopkeeper's proud. And the Joneses have horrible quarrels at night. They're right. I'm very bad too. Sophie looks puzzled. What hope is there if things are, that's awful, she says. What hope is there if things are really like that? She sits on the chimney and stares at the sky. I'm so glad that you ask, says the Heidelberg cat. The Bible tells stories of hundreds of people and all of them disobey God, except one. So hope doesn't come from the good things we do. It comes as a gift from what Jesus has done. There we go. 
You've trusted in him, so he's paid for your sins and thrown them all into the depths of the sea. By rising again, he has broken the power of death and the devil and let you go free. He watches your life. He makes all things work out. He helps you and makes he helps you make choices. He tells you what's true. He promises you'll live forever with him. And that's why the hope comes from him, not from you. Sophie sits still to make sure the cat's finished. She has enough questions to talk for a week, but knows very well, as I'm sure you do too, that you always leave time for a cat that can speak. I'd better go home, Sophie finally says, and tell them I'm sorry, but thanks for the talk. I'm so looking forward to telling my friends that I spoke to a cat and we went for a walk. One other thing you should know, says the cat, as it silently crosses the tiles on all four. The best and most comforting news in the world is that I am not mine and you are not yours. Sophie is shocked. What on earth do you mean? Well, look at that tag on your neck, says the cat. It tells my name, then it tells you my owners. The Heidelbergs bought me, I'm theirs, and that's that. The same goes for you. You've been rescued by Jesus. So he's your master from now till you die. He's, he'll love you, protect you, and never neglect you. But you're not your own, Sophie. Neither am I. At last they arrive right outside Sophie's window. She clambers back in with her hand on the slat. When will I see you again, Sophie asks. I'm not sure you will, says the Heidelberg cat. But to help you remember our first conversation, I'll give you my tag with my name just in case. With that, it goes back to the Heidelberg's chimney. Sophie looks down at the tag. It says Grace. The end. So that was Sophie and our Heidelberg cat. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you remember that I am not mine and you are not yours. We have been bought and loved by Jesus.